What does it mean to be an Australian citizen? We'd like to think it makes us special and gives us a sense of belonging to a community that would look out for us when things get tough. The spirit of Australians have been legendary in that regard, but when the pandemic came, many of us wondered if citizenship had any value at all. Now it's time to put those dark days behind us. However, there are some citizens who still have very few rights and are at the mercy of government decisions. Our fellow citizens live in a country where they're not even certain if they're able to stay here much longer. They live in fear of the government and what the government is going to do to their family. On a daily basis, they face stress and uncertainty. This is what the Immigration Department today is doing to a small minority of Australian citizen children. These children are often the only Australian citizens in their immediate family. They only know Australia as their home. However, their parents and often siblings face deportation from the Australian government, despite the fact they have too lived here for a long time and contributed to society. Tonight we want you to meet Bronson, and in the coming few weeks you will meet other children who only know Australia as their home. Bronson is four years old, born in Australia to his Australian citizen mother and his father Daryl, who is a temporary resident from Ireland. Bronson is young and doesn't realise that his father has no visa avenue to stay here in Australia to continue to be a crucial part of his life. Unfortunately, the couple were not able to apply for a partner visa for Daryl before the relationship ended. If they had been able to lodge that partner visa, then Daryl would have been fine and allowed to stay because there is an Australian citizen child of the relationship. But since the application wasn't lodged, there is now no pathway for Daryl to stay permanently in Australia. Daryl came to Australia on his original working holiday visa and then the pandemic visa and now another pandemic visa. He works at the Royal Melbourne Children's Hospital and he was there helping us during the pandemic. He's worked hard, paying his taxes and spending most of his money just trying to live and look after his son. It's a clock? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. His ex-partner is not so well at the moment and the grandparents have stepped in to help Daryl raise the child. I spoke with Daryl and his grandfather to discuss how they're feeling about Bronson's future in Australia. G'day Daryl, thanks for joining me for this interview and sharing your experience with us on the program. Please give us an introduction about your journey so far in Australia. When I moved to your beautiful country like four years ago, Matt, uh, my, my ex-partner, Bronson's mum, we end up having a child. And what has it been like for you being a new father? He's the only thing that's made me happy again in this world. There's no happiness without him, lad. He is my everything. The only reason I fight to stay like a mentally fit and stable in this world and hold down a job is because I know he's with me. And that must be a great feeling, but the fear of losing him must also be on your mind. To lose him, it's basically a sign of my death certificate. Like there's no, there's no life back home without him there's no life without him at all and the trauma of him through my life even over here losing like my nephew who's supposed to be born three days after Bronson I lost my granny a few months ago I've lost my auntie I've lost cousins I've lost friends and the only thing that's keep me going is my son like there's there's this there's nothing without him there's no life without him like he's my everything like he's everything to me like like nothing nothing in this world means anything to me except him nothing like there's no uh, my, my life will be ended if I'm talk off him like it's just that simple. Like there is no life without him. At all. At all. Yeah, I can't imagine how you must be feeling as there's no visa avenue at all for you to stay in Australia, is there? No. And the, like the thing should be like, I've, I've worked in a critical sector the whole pandemic, put my life in the line for Australians without even a fuss. And like, all I want is like for the minister to have some compassion on that. Like, to, like, like, Imagine how he would feel like losing his child. Like, like, could he live without his child? Because I know I can't. Like, you can probably hear my son in the background. Like, his wee laugh keeps me going. It's like, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's no life without him. But especially as after losing my brother, he's the only thing that keeps me going. Like, he's the only thing in this world that keeps me going. Like, there's nothing else in this world that keeps me going except him. Like, literally. Yeah. Sorry for crying. We are going to do our best to put your case forward to the Minister and publicly let people know what all parents must be facing who have similar circumstances to yours. Can we meet Bronson by the way, for I can hear him in the background. Bronson, come here. Hurry up Bronson, come to daddy two seconds. Bronson, come here look. No, no. Sorry, you can talk away from his, his dog. Oh. 
Oh, hola, no, say hello, say hello. Hello, Bronson. He just he's been put away from his uh, granddad's dog, so he's uh, like Bronson Lodge. Say say hi. <laughs> so, how much time do you get to spend together? Try my best to help her as much as I can. So, his her her dad and her mum and all is uh, so open to helping me and help raising Bronson, and they're gonna try and do everything they can to keep me with them as well. Mm. So that's why the pops is on the, the video call as well because they, they're they're willing to help. They they'll do as much as they can to help me stay in the country of Bronson. And can we say hello to Bronson's grandfather as well? Yeah, hello, hello, mate. Okay. Oh, I'm Gary, by the way. Hi, Gary. You've heard about the difficulties Daryl is facing finding a visa in Australia, which is currently well, there's none. What would you like to say to the minister to try and help him out? Well, look, first and foremost, at the moment, we're going through a little bit of drama because um, my daughter, um, and it pains me to say it, is not capable of looking after young Bronson. She's um, in a bad place mentally um, and, and cannot look after him. So Daryl has taken on the main responsibility of that. We'll all chip in as much as we can to give him a hand. Daryl deserves the chance. Um, he's proved to me that he, he's a good father. Not only is he the father at the moment, but he's also the mother. He's doing everything. Sure. And uh, we will fully support him in any way we can, which yeah. we're trying to do now. Yes, Gary, that's incredibly disappointing to see an Australian citizen child facing the possibility that his father may be deported and effectively that could mean Bronson as well. And Daryl, thanks for coming on the program and sharing your story with us. It seems that since Australian children cannot vote, what happens to them does not seem to matter to all of the immigration department ministers we have had since my career began 24 years ago in this industry. None of them have bothered to come up with a solution to this issue, and many Australian children have been deported with their parents offshore. Now, of course, you cannot legally deport an Australian citizen, but the Human Rights Commission has already advised the government that when non-citizen parents are deported, then you have effectively deporting the Australian citizen child as well. Let's not kid ourselves here. If the parents are facing deportation, then so are our Australian citizen children. And I say our because we should all be caring about each other and particularly our children. So to the ministers Claire O'Neill and Andrew Giles, if you want to reshape the migration system, then do so in a compassionate way and give our children the right to keep their families in Australia with them. Give us the assurance that no Australian child will face the trauma of having their family removed and tearing them away from the only country they know and the country they call home.